to God.
of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the demonstration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord spits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and stripes the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ.
John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the tongue of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will be baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, the baby of Bethlehem has grown up and now is being baptized. It is a great thing that the church has this feast of the baptism of the Lord Jesus at the beginning of the secular year. Because by remembering Jesus' baptism, we can rem remember our own baptism. And remembering our own baptism, it helps us to focus, to refine our purposes, to give direction in our lives for this new year. And most importantly, the Holy Spirit is refreshing us today. The sacrament of baptism is a sacrament of mission. Let me repeat that, this. The sacrament of baptism is a sacrament of mission, which means that by the sacrament of baptism, we are consecrated to God. We are set apart. We become his beloved children in whom he is well pleased. And as beloved children of God, we are sent by God into the world to make disciples, to build God's kingdom, to manifest God's glory, to build communities of faith, to pray, to sing to the Lord, to teach about God, faith, love, to help the poor, the sick, the wounded. We are sent to get busy doing God's work. Unfortunately, today many people think of the sacrament of baptism as a rite, as an social event, rite and social event. They think about pictures, dresses, parties, celebrations, but not too much about the meaning, what signifies to be baptized in the Lord Jesus. The readings 
chosen for today's celebration give to us several elements to help us to remember who we are as baptized people of God. From the book of Genesis, we remember that we are the light. We are children of the light. So we are called to enlighten others with our lights, to enlighten the world in hope, unity, and peace. This is so important to remember during these difficult times of darkness and confusion. You are the light. God is telling us, you are the light. You are like a flashlight called to enlighten the world. So let us shed that light to the world that is so much in darkness. From the Acts of the Apostles, we read that through our own baptism, we have received the Holy Spirit, the divine life, the power of God, the power of faith, the power of love, and the charisms or gifts to minister to the church in the world. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, why am I so talented? Why God is giving me so many gifts? What God wants for me to do with those gifts that he has uh, given to us as believers? And what happens if we don't use that, those gifts that the Lord has given to all of us in the sacrament of baptism? For me, the answer is very simple. If we don't use, use those talents, we hide those talents, we become very frustrated people, very sad people. So using those gifts to praise the Lord give us life and joy. We have been empowered to do the ministry in the world. We, through the sacrament of, of baptism, we receive faith, energy, creativity, imagination, care, in order to build, to build God's kingdom. Because of the work of the Holy Spirit it, that is in us, within us, we build communities of faith, we build churches, we offer words of hope to one another, encourage one another, in order that we become better people and uh, we create a better world, world for all. We have to say that the Holy Spirit is very active in all of us. I hope that you can feel how the Holy Spirit is very active today and in our lives and in the life of our community of faith. From the Gospel of Mark, as we know, Mark doesn't talk at all about the physical, the physical birth of Jesus. He starts the Gospel by describing to us the spiritual birth of Jesus, the, the sacrament of baptism, being baptized by John the baptizer in the Jordan River. Perhaps what happened, and as we know, Mark is perhaps the first uh, gospel to be written, perhaps what happened was that people got to know Jesus his preachings, his actions, his love for God's people. And then they started wondering when this started, how this came about, and who is this person? Who is this guy? And the first thing is that they discovered is that Jesus started ministering to God and his people at the moment he was baptized. But then 
they started asking, and who, who is this guy? Where is he coming from? And the Gospel of Matthew and Luke tried to respond to that. He is the son of Mary, the son of Joseph, the carpenter, the guy from Nazareth. But for Mark, the point is, he is the son of God, and he came, came with a clear purpose, to be baptized, and by being baptized, he is going to do the work that God, is, his father, is sending him to do, which is the work of redemption. Sometimes we ask ourselves, why was Jesus baptized? If we, he already was son of God, he came from God, remember? So how that happened that Jesus had to be baptized? in order to become children of God, a son of God? Well, here is part of the answer. Jesus received the baptism by water and Holy Spirit. First of all, it was to seal a covenant with God's people, to be part of us as community of believers. God loves love us so much that he, in Jesus, he wants to be part of us. And perhaps it's a very deep theological reason to say, this is the reason that Jesus was baptized, not to become a child of God, but to become a son of man, one of us, working with us, teaching us an example, how to be a child of God in this world. So that is a, a very important reason to discover how the love of God took him to send Jesus, and Jesus said, in order to start this ministry, I want to be part of a community. And let me start there, being part of a community, forming a community of disciples. I want to be with them. I don't want to be alone doing the work, but being part of a community doing a covenant with them in order to bring them back to God. If you were here today in this nave this morning, I would have asked you to do two things. One, to renew the baptismal promises, and then I would have sprinkled you with holy water. But because it is not possible at this moment to be here today, Hopefully, for the next time, we will get to together for the baptism of Jesus. We can be together. But in, in this year, because of the difficulties and obstacles that we already know, uh, you are at home. I am here at the ninth. What I invite you to do is to get, go to the kitchen and get a bowl of water, a little bit of water, and have it ready. So when, when I do... In a few minutes, I will do the baptismal promises, and we will renew our promises at the beginning of this year. At the end of the renewal of the promises, I want for you to dip your uh, hand, put your hand into the water, and bless yourself. Bless yourself and say the, Trinitar the Trinitarian formula, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to remind ourselves that we... We, we are beloved children of God, the Father. We are consecrated to him. Therefore, we are holy people. And because we are holy people, we are set apart. We are, we are protected from all evil, from all sickness and death. When we said, Son, the second person of the Trinity, what we are saying is that we follow a leader. Jesus is our leader. He is our teacher, our guide. We try to follow his examples. We try to use his term terminology his uh, words of love and peace and reconciliation, his words and actions. His actions and words are the ones who are guiding us as children of God. And really, 
if we, if we put this together, um, if we follow, we're invited to follow Jesus, to follow his example in order to become a beloved children of God. That is what we are. That is our identity, beloved children of God. And when we put water and mark ourselves and we say the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, what we are saying is, I have been empowered. The Holy Spirit dwells in my life in order that I can give testimony of my faith to the world. And uh, we need to recognize that by being baptized, we are no longer alone, abandoned in the world. By the sacrament of baptism, we become we, we. We go from I, individual, to we, collective, community. The community of God, the community with God and with God's people. We are not alone anymore. We are a community. We belong to God and to God's community of believers. And if we, at the beginning of this year, uh, celebrate Jesus' baptism and renew our baptismal promises, we are saying we are one with Jesus. And we are at Jesus one again, once again to walk with us this year together to help us to discover the new ways to be Christians today. Have to be a beautiful ways to be Christian today in the world. To bring unity and peace among all, as Jesus did in his own time. And uh, once we are, are renewing our baptismal, baptismal promises and we mark ourselves with holy water in our, home, in our homes, I invite you to join Jesus as together as a community of faith here in St. Edwards, renewed in our own baptism to do the work of, in 2021, the work of restoring our church, supporting our church, and strengthening the beloved community of St. Edwards. And please, go, go out as a new baptized person who has renewed the covenant with Jesus. Go out to proclaim to the world that God, the God of life, the God of love, lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. In this feast of the baptism of Jesus the Lord, I invite you to join me and the entire community of faith to renew our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teachings and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, I will ask God's help. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 The Prayers of the People Let us pray to our God, whose spirit breathes life into being, that through baptism we may be empowered as God's beloved children to share in the healing and reconciling work of Christ. Fill your church with the power of your Holy Spirit, O gracious one, that we may bring the light of your blessing to the whole world. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give us the blessing of peace. Let your gentle spirit be upon this nation and upon all in authority, that we may share in your work to bring forth justice upon the earth. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give us the blessing of peace. Let your prophets to speak powerful words of repentance and transformation to the ends of the earth, that the breath of your creative love and the sound of your blessing may go forth throughout the world. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give us the blessing of peace. Let your grace descend and dwell among the people of this community, that we may be united in love, abounding in compassion, and proactive in peace. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give us the blessing of peace. Let the heavens open and your spirit descend upon us, bringing your comfort and healing to all for whom we pray, especially Gabrielle, Vivian, Sylvia, Gilfredo, Thomas, Regina, Carrie, Jerry, Darren, Valerie, Charles, Whistlin, Diana, Elton, Mara, Sec, Doss, Patsy, Colleen, Glenn, Wendy, George, Rick, Jim, Otto, Andrea, Alice, Sarah, Lillian, Hannah, Craig, Bruce, Lori, David, Jason, Arthur, John, Marilyn, Kay, Julie, Kathy, Julia, Faikai, Jasmine, Blanding, Rosemary, Lee, Patricia, Graciela, Vanya, Lindy, Shandy, Mary, Rick, Leanne, Jan, Leon, Alex, Grace, Matthew, Noah, Donovan, Monica, Brianna, and Jennifer. We also pray for the victims of COVID-19, their families, all who minister to others, and those that serve our communities. Here are grateful thanks and praise for your manifestation of presence and grace in our lives and in the lives of others, giving thanks especially for the anniversaries and birthdays of Dave Joachim, Diane Littleton, Gretel Hernandez Salas, 
Maisie Ray, Pat Bratton, Pam Heron, Ariana Dennis, Cecilia Midzi, Aimee Islas Santiago. We welcome with your divine pleasure all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal domains. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give us the blessing of peace. Gracious and loving God, you have anointed your people with the waters of baptism, and you have made us your beloved children. Let your spirit spread mightily among us, that we may share in the work of your Son, bringing blessing and light to all the world in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Birthday blessings. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray for your servants, Wendy Sawyer, Rishlu Ramirez, Jareli Ramirez, Rosemary Westpelling, Barku Terpe, Tobias Tue, Ezekiel Higgins, Buck Mosley, Moni Tommy, Jim Eckhart, Santiago Gonzalez Morales, Shandy Wickham, Hena Norton, Dave Joachim, Diane Littleton, Gretel Hernandez Salas, Mays Re, Pat Brayton, Pam Herring, Ariana Dennis, Cecilia Mitzi, Amy Island Santiago, Daryl Joachim, Elijah Clark, Joan Ferris, Yul French, Robert Luviano, Gabriel Mays, Claudia Sotelo, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and extend their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Anniversary blessings. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon your children. Bersford and Christina Jones, and Janet Moore, and Alphonsus Delmeida. May they so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a heaven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us, an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thy, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lead them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always, and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, make us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, join our voices with the angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the colony of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We praise you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country where with St. Edward and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory, yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the physical presence of our community, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, in you and us, in this life and the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. As Christ to God, 
glory, and strength, and worship God in the beauty of holiness. The same God who proclaimed Jesus as the beloved has also made you God's beloved child. You are part of the goodness of God's wonderful creation. You have received the Holy Spirit. Keep the covenant you have made and boldly live in the light of the Spirit. And the blessing of our loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and empower you now and forever. Amen. Before the dismissal, um, Happy New Year. I, I really pray that this 2020 would be a wonderful year for all of us, all your families, all our friends, and the entire world, and of course, the most importantly, the life of the community of St. Edwards. I pray that soon, soon, I don't know when, but soon we'll be able to start coming back, coming back and getting together in this God's sanctuary, this His Holy Church. Remember that we continue having the in Zoom coffee hour to greet each other in a very informal way. You don't have to, be, to have any preparation at all to come. Just have your cup of coffee or tea and come and join us for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Come and say hello to each other in, do, in this new year. Uh, Zoom coffee hour happens immediately after this service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I went down in the river to pray, sallying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown?